Hey, good morning, guys. This is Chico Lopez. Today I have a great message for you. You are going to learn so much. You're going to learn things that other people wish they could have these. You'll find a lot of people that actually own dogs, that they go the extra mile. They try to find this little food, this little injection, this little pill, this uh, color, these blah, blah, all these different things. They spend money on treadmills. They buy uh, a 3000 5000 10000 dollar treadmill to condition a dog. And the problem is that they usually condition the wrong dog. So, because you can't beat genetics. So when you don't have the proper dog, you gotta go through all these different things to try to compensate. They get a cheap dog, they get a common dog, they get a dog full of excuses why it, the existence of this dog is, is uh, happening. And they start buying all kinds of accessories around it. Others, they just spend time because their time has no value. So they spend time looking for people that are just like them and will give them an idea or give them a consensus um, reasons why they should like the dog that they have. But the hard cold truth about the American Purple Terrier, whether you like it or not, is not up to you. It's actually up to the breed itself, the real American Purple Terrier. It was created under a framework it was not created under uh, a standard. The standard came after the dog already exists. The framework came before the dog exists. And at this particular point, there are breeding decisions that had to be made by men that actually had the knowledge and by men that actually had the capacity, the network to be able to connect to know where exactly these dogs are at, make those decisions and have the financial opportunity to be able to make choices because you do need to have choices the man that has very little choices never is going to have the greatest dogs and here it is where i'm bringing you bunch of knowledge let me tell you a little secret the american pitbull terrier the real american pitbull terrier not those dogs that you know the dogs that you personally met because the chances that you ever met a real american pitbull terrier are slim to none period you might see a dog with a, with a pedigree. You might see them at a dog show. You might have a bloodline this and a bloodline that. All these illusions. Let me explain to you how it really works. People didn't want you to know this. And the truth is that themselves didn't want to know that this is the truth. But the American Pebble Terrier was built on rejection. Let me explain to you this. Because sit down, have a cup of coffee. Just sit down a little bit so this can hit you right on the forehead. The American Pitbull Terrier was built on rejection. It was the game of rejecting every single dog that it was not the best dog over everything. And by a reasoning of rejection, the ones that are left are absolutely the best. It's a 30, 30, 30, a 33, 33, 33, and that's how it works. 33% of the dogs always gotta be shifted around, gotta be come out out of the programs, got to come out out of everything. And only those 233% become 100% or your 99%, which is really a 66%. It's a rule of work. You're not going to hear this from a breeder. Breeders, they have no idea what this is. So before, I'm talking about all these guys, before somebody doesn't dogs for 20, 30 years, you're, the people that actually picked the best dogs were actually using those very few men that matter they were actually using a framework of picking only the best after they rejected all the dogs. On a simple contest back in the 1800s, early 1900s, or in the golden era of the American Bible Terrier, when two dogs went at each other, when it was legal, or it happened when it was illegal, it happened not in the United States, blah, 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 just take a chill pill. When that happened, where the great dogs were made, you must understand they were forged on fire. And there was always one dog that won and one dog that quit. So automatically that was 50% of all dogs with pedigrees, with owners that were behind the dogs that had dreams, that were willing to bet on the dog, that really liked the dog, that dog was out of the picture. Those dogs that were left over, they still had to go through a process of selection. So it was always by a rejection process. So you have 200 dogs, and those 200 dogs are split among 10 men. So that's 20 dogs per man if you follow the mathematics. 
and those men have those all those ten, those 20 stud dogs but all of a sudden a man comes in with one dog that's related to two sisters or three brothers or whatever which are extremely great the father the mother extremely great the dog is producing that is a network of dogs and that is a lot better than those 200 dogs if those men were real breeders if they were really quality men they will get rid of those 200 dogs cut their nuts castrate them give them away as farm dogs as pets whatever and move on to the man that has the better dogs because the better dogs is actually the breed now what people do today is they look for a little forum a little group whole hands sing kumbaya feel happy about themselves and give themselves all the excuses but my dog got a little bit of jeep but my dog got a little bit of this but my dog got the same blood like more oh. those people are delusional some of them are sick on the head they have the wrong dog the right dog today is 0.01 percent there is very very few real american purple terriers okay i'm going to show you some pictures of the best american purple terriers in the planet look at those dogs those are the real dogs those are the real american purple terriers and it happens to be that they come from a journey of greatness rejection selection where the name is only the best so this video should matter to you because if you make the wrong decision in the past and you are at the pet level because at a pet level any dog can become the best dog in the world your son the great whatever people do that with a chicken people do that with a spider people do that with a lizard and with the turtle as well they can do it with a mud dog they can do it whatever but this video is not made for those guys that once the dog belongs to you is supposed to be the best this video is made for those that are absolutely obsessed that are have madness in their head to absolutely own the absolute only the best because only the best matters only the best is what's created after hard process of selection rejection and promoting and developing the best dogs to the next level to the next level where there is consistency and a tremendous amount of wealth of genetic composition so when you're looking at all those guys those breeders that are surrounded themselves by a whole bunch of fans that think they are geniuses and dogs and they have no merits they have nothing and but they all call each other whatever you got to be walking away from those people because their influence is a very common and mediocre influence you won't find me hanging around with guys you won't find me in circles with other people the american purple terrier was built to be only the best and the real breed is only the best that's the breed that's why the dog is so freaking great because he's only the best and he's so american so patriotic so tremendous dog he's the most kind most soft most loving dog when you look at the dog the dog looks at you you literally think you are connected and talking without saying a word because you, you can only get to the level of bond with that machine that can run for miles that dog that when you walk in the street people from across the street they look and they say whoa that dog is beautiful it's different can i touch it the, the the hair is silky everything the whole nine yards that is the real american purple terrier everything else is just pretending it's just an imitation take a look at the pictures of these great dogs take care of yourself god bless you